Welcome to the Homeschool Mama Self-Care Podcast. I'm Teresa Wiedrich from CapturingTheCharmLife.com. If you're a homeschool mama challenged by doubt, not sure you can do this homeschool thing. If you're a homeschool mama challenged by overwhelm, there's just too many things to do. Or if you're a homeschool mama that's not showing up in her homeschool the way she wants to show up in her homeschool, then this is the podcast for you. I've dedicated this third season of the Homeschool Mama Self-Care Podcast to the newer Homeschool Mama or the Homeschool Curious. So if you are curious about homeschooling and want to explore all the common questions around it, that's why we're here. So if you've been homeschooling for just a few years, a few months, or you're considering homeschooling for the upcoming year, then this podcast season is dedicated to you. So welcome, Homeschool Mama. On today's episode, I'm going to share with you why kids don't need school socialization and why they need you instead. One of the most common questions that I have heard over the years is, what about socialization? Have you heard that too? Have you wondered that too? I have wondered that. I was there once upon a time, and I imagined there only could be weird children that would be turned out post-homeschooling experience. And it turns out there's homeschooling kids that are weird and there's homeschooling kids that aren't weird. But the reason we define them as weird is because they just aren't like us. They don't seem like us, which might I add is an experience we have in school as well. Are there weird kids in school? Well, One should never say such a thing, of course, but this is our natural tendency to think that some people feel a bit off or odd or unusual. And that is in homeschooling, and that is in schooling, and that is a thing that everyone experiences everywhere. Have you been asked that question, or are you wondering if that's going to be the case if you homeschool your kids? Well, today we're going to talk about that. I have a few posts on my website, capturingthecharmlife.com, that are all about the experience of socialization and school, or homeschool, because it was a question I was asked for, well, for a couple decades. And one of the things that I share with you is the discussion today about why they need you more than they need school or a schooled environment to become social. Of course, this is a discussion that could be held at the Homeschool Mama Book Club when we were chatting about Gordon Neufeld's book, Hold On to Your Kids. He speaks to this exact discussion. I wasn't familiar with that book at that time. And when I first wrote this post back in 2013, I still had four kids at home. I was just entering a new season of homeschool because the last summer season, we did a variety of things at home that certainly could appear to be schooly because I was in that space at my homeschool or in my homeschool years where I actually wanted to keep doing things during the summer and eventually that faded out. But at this season, I had just finished up a summer school with my kids. One of my girls went to a music summer school and I got to experience what it was like to have my child in a school. So I'm going to share with you today why kids don't need school socialization and why they need you instead. This summer, I learned what my kids don't need from a school, socialization. What I don't provide my kids at home, but schools can, marimbas of every size, shape, and number. I don't lead a children's choir, nor could I. I don't have a drama club, though I probably could. And I don't oversee 200 children at a time, and I definitely wouldn't want to. So we registered our oldest daughter in a summer music school for a few weeks in July instead. She loved it. She loved the class offerings, marimba, choir, backstage prep, and piano lessons. Her gregarious nature loved to meet new people, watch kids her age mix with different kids their age, see how they think, learn what they value. She loves dancing and performing and singing at the final pep rally-like party that they had. She had a grand time. And I loved it too. These music school people knew what they were doing. 
Since I'm unwilling to purchase or even rent a xylophone for my home or teach my kids to stay on pitch, and I don't even really know what that means, off to summer music school she went. It was an experience like nothing I could provide at home. But what I didn't sign up for, though, I should have known that I would have signed up for. It was the incredible drain it would be on my daughter. It wasn't just because she had to be up early by 7 a.m. at the latest. It wasn't just because she needed to have her chores completed before she left or pack a lunch. She kind of liked having cheese strings and prepackaged food, and that wasn't something we typically did with our hot lunches at lunchtime. It wasn't because she needed to do the paper route after her full day of school, but she did. I saw that she was drained because she was surrounded by people. People that demanded her attention, people that indirectly or directly suggested how she must be, how she must act, dress, talk, all the things. She didn't have time to process all the information rushing at her, or so it appeared to me. She didn't have someone to process it with. She didn't have a quiet moment to just think, to be lost in her thoughts, like she could be at home. Well, you might say these experiences are normal. The school experience is normal. And in our culture, it is the norm. Most people go to school. I did it myself for 12 years, plus six years of post-secondary school. But normal doesn't mean healthy. Nope, I'm not convinced. There's a book by Gordon Neufeld, Hold On To Your Kids. He discusses the concepts around attachment theory. He cemented my belief that when kids hang around with kids for long periods, they become dependent on their peers. Dependent to ask them, what should I wear? How should I act? What should I do? What should I value? Who should I be friends with? How should I think? How should I see the world? Do they ask them that? No. But is that what they're actually doing? Yes. They're normalizing based on their social group, around the people that are always around them. And that is not normal. Not human history normal, anyway. Of course, I'm not against my kids hanging out with other kids, or even absorbing some of the things that are going on in the culture. They love their friends. They love meeting new friends. They love to chitter-chatter with friends of all ages, from babies to seniors. But when their hearts, their little hearts, look to other kids to determine whether something is a good thing to do, whether something they do is valuable, whether they see themselves as a person of value because that other person is looking back at them and either choosing to value them or not, then nope. I don't support that kind of socialization. A social structure, by the way, that will never be repeated in their life again. Kids don't need school socialization. I believe that kids were meant to primarily look to their parents as guides, affirmers, leaders in their developing lives. In other words, to become socialized. The ideal place for kids is alongside their parents. So I'll keep my kids home and you can keep your marimbas at school. I'm interrupting this episode to let you know that you can access the D-School Your Homeschool checklist on my website. So the D-School Your Homeschool checklist has about 12 to 15 steps that you can consider to either include or exclude in your present homeschool, or you can just help to transition away from a very schooled mentality. I hope it's useful for you. Or if you want to dig deeper, you can access the D-School Your Homeschool Workbook. This journaling workbook aids in your self-exploration to get you clear on how you can bring that freedom and individualization into your homeschool. It really just increases your clarity and confidence in your homeschool. So set aside time to do it or bring it to the beach. Whatever watering hole you'll be going to with the kids, 
snacks, a bag for all the things that you're going to need to bring, probably towels, maybe some sand toys, and your journaling workbook. <laughs> My intention is to give you a self-coaching tool that you can use for yourself. You're going to answer a few questions to assess how you've been experiencing your homeschool, then decide what's getting in your way what you really think is important for your homeschool. You're going to determine the areas you'd like to explore more and practically implement whatever you need. Assume that you'll need a few minutes. So assume that maybe the kids are playing in the sand, you've already given them a few snacks, and you're sitting under the big old umbrella enjoying this workbook. Our homeschool goal is not to find a comfy box for a homeschool, but rather to create an education or an atmosphere that's conducive to growth and expansion for our specific kids. And how to do that? Well, there's no easy formula because there is no one size fits all education because there's no one size fits all kid, which makes this whole homeschool thing highly individualized. But you know what gets in our way? You probably already know. Often our preconceived notions about what we think we need in order to create that home education Often our preconceived notions about what we think an education is anyway. And also preconceived notions about what other people think an education is, because we're listening to them too. So let's unpack that all. Get clear on what you really think. Determine how you want your homeschool to reflect your real homeschool kids. And let's de-school your homeschool. You can find that at capturingthecharmlife.com. Now back to the episode. And as a side note, I'll declare it, I have come to understand since 2013, my kids were little at the time, my oldest probably about 11 or 12, 13, somewhere in there, um, they also individuate, another Gordon Neufeld term from the book, Hold On To Your Kids, they individuate, which means they grow up, they don't always want to see everything through my eyes, or see the world through the construct of just our immediate family. And though I was terribly uncomfortable with that notion in the beginning years, I realized that is what they do when they get to be teenagers and they want to branch out a bit more. So their exposure to other social dynamics is something I'm comfortable with. They get to expand their vision on the world and how they understand the world beyond me. But I am the anchor. I am the available anchor for them. Always. You can check on my Capturing the Charm Life website. You'll see that I write about socialization in a few different ways. So if you're interested, I have a discussion on the nine ways homeschool socialization can be quantified based on a research study. I also speak to the truth behind homeschool socialization, the 10 secrets that might surprise you, if you're new to homeschool, what about homeschool socialization? Do you need to take care of homeschool mama's socialization? There is an element of socialization nobody seems to talk about, but I think is extremely relevant. Because where are we bringing our children to? We're bringing them to all sorts of youth groups or music lessons or sports lessons or music schools or you name it. I feel like I've done all of it, but some form of forest school, co-op, you name it, all week long, we're bringing our kids to do social events. Very few of us don't do anything. We bring our kids to all these events and often we wait in the car. <laughs> so what about mama's socialization? I'd love to hear more from you if you have thoughts or questions about the episode or about our topic. I'd love to hear from you. So head over to my website, www.capturingthecharmlife.com and leave a comment anywhere. If you're looking for an authentic, supportive community with like-minded homeschool mamas who want to show up on purpose in their homeschool and lives, then you are welcome to join us at the Homeschool Mama Self-Care Patreon community. You'll have access to good old fashioned support chats. You'll get discounts on the D School Your Homeschool Intensive, group coaching opportunities, and the Homeschool Mama Retreat. And you get to join me in extended live interviews with past podcast guests. I'm looking forward to getting to know you and your homeschool family. I'll see you there.